We need to talk about Cosby, Showtime series from a year ago. I've just watched it recently, a couple of, uh, maybe five days ago. I finished it up, a uh, four-part, one-hour series. I don't want to mispronounce uh, the gentleman's name that directed. I, I think it's W. Kamau Bell. He's a familiar face. If you've watched any uh, TV the last 15 or 20 years, I think on shows, you know, they used to do those pop-up shows where they'd have the talking heads and they'd, they'd pop up, you know, it was just back on MTV and stuff like that. You know, the, these were the days or these were the 80s or whatever the fuck. One of these guys that's been around, but he does a nice job with this documentary. Um, you've heard my pet peeve on modern day documentaries that that they always start with like the cameras getting rolled in and they put the fucking interview subject matter in a chair and they do the whole board with the clapboard thing. There's some of that in this. It's just becoming like a routine for documentaries to make you feel like you're seeing something you're not supposed to see. Uh, but beyond that, what is this series about? Well, I would say there's two things going on at once, at least two things. There is the ex examination, expose, exploration of Bill Cosby uh, and the good and the bad, the, his career, uh, the successes he had, the, the breakthroughs that he had. And this is when you can say a guy actually did have breakthroughs. You know, he's him and, and Dick Gregory were kind of two, uh, two sides of the same coin as far as making advancements with integration. Uh, you know, and good stuff like that. So, I mean, the guy did do a lot of good, you know, but we talking about Cosby, but of course he did a lot of bad. And, um, I had previously listened to a podcast series called, uh, Chasing Cosby, which I think was excellent and kind of gives a full breadth of the Cosby situation. The difference with this, uh, Showtime series is the, we need to talk about Cosby they do a series of interviews with people that either knew Bill Cosby. Some some people were kind of periphery or fringe actors on the Cosby show from the 80s. Uh, some of the women that accused him of sexual abuse. Um, some of them were interviewed. I think the, 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 the lawyer's name, Gloria Allridge, I believe she's, she's in this interview. She is. I'm just trying to see if I'm saying the names right. Um, so you get a pretty good spectrum. I mean, you got some people who, I wouldn't say they're denying what Cosby uh, is alleged to have done, but they're just saying, you know, they weren't aware of it. And they, and they were, you know, some of them were men. Some of the guys that worked on the Cosby show, the periphery actors, but one of them does make a, a case um, that he, he and another actor, I think the guy that played Sandra's husband, they would have, they would share a dressing room when they were on the Cosby show. But if a certain, you know, attractive young actress was cast for that particular day, she would get the dressing room and these poor guys would get shoved into a closet. So there are some stories and that, you know, that whole thing of, is it just one person who commits this crime or are there a slew of people that turn the other way, pretend like they don't see something, uh, don't really investigate, although they might have their suspicions that something treacherous is going on. And it seems to paint the picture that even with the good old Cosby show from the 80s, um, you know, they mentioned the, that women, that these, there was like a section for every Cosby show taping, a section of models that just happened to be there. And some of these women were kind of, you know, I don't know a better term for it, but imported uh, to Bill, to Bill Cosby for his personal uh, satisfactions. And then there was a woman who got a small, you know, beautiful woman. She got a, a cast, she got cast in a small role in the Cosby show as a female police officer or an off, a police officer who happened to be female. Don't hashtag me. But basically that came with the price of Cosby trying to sleep with her. And she was lucky to get out of that situation. And you meet and during the course of this uh, documentary, you meet several women that had these type of interactions with Cosby. A lot of them have uh, stories about being drugged. <clears throat> and you've heard, I don't know if you ever saw the Larry King clip, it's pretty poignant. And even, believe it or not, recorded video 
uh, or recorded audio at least of, of Cosby talk about the Spanish fly, which was apparently, you know, this this kind of socially, I don't know if I would say accepted, but uh, common early dr d date rape pill. I guess it was some type of liquid that you would put into a drink. And then Cosby's joking about this on Larry King. And Larry King's kind of going along with it. Larry King doesn't call him out on it. And uh, But if you go back to the song from the 80s, you know, Funky Cold Medina. I mean, listen to that song and tell me what you think. So when people... And then we go into this whole other goddamn thing about... Um, modern people, contemporary people judging actions and activities from the past, uh, you know, something like Funky Cold Medina, the song. At the time, it was just a fun, crazy song. But now you look at it and you're like, oh my God, this is an anthem for fucking date rape or the roofies or whatever the fuck. So yes, times change. We all get more enlightened, blah, blah, blah. Now, what Cosby was alleged to have done uh, during those years of, of all these, I think it's over 60 women, uh, claimed abuse it was abuse back then it was rape back then it was illegal back then so let's not kid ourselves it's just that uh you know as is today but maybe more so back then power money fame influence uh it all gave gave uh him ammunition the other thing that's interesting which i wish you know and and the the director does kind of come forth as they were wrapping up this documentary, Cosby was released uh, from prison. And the, the reason, and some, you know, they talk about that a little bit in the doc, they try to shoehorn it in at the end, is, um, you know, basically one of these, uh, you know, law enforcement officers uh, made a bad deal with Cosby and he probably shouldn't have made the deal. But basically, from how I understand it, he gave Cosby uh, clemency. Uh, as long as, you know, Cosby, come in, give me your statement, tell me everything you did, but we won't prosecute. Well, that's a pretty bad deal. You know, if you're trying to put, you know, bad guys away or, or trying to serve justice or uphold the law, this crazy fucking deal of come in, you know, make your statement, but we'll give you clemency. We won't prosecute you. That's on that fucking person that did that. I'm not sure what their name was. I think it's disgust in chasing Cosby. And then once the, the charges came against Cosby, <clears throat> the person that took over that guy's job said, well, fuck this deal. I'm not going to honor this deal. This deal is shit. But I believe the recordings, the audio recordings of Cosby's own statement were used in court against him, which is basically, you can't do that. You can't tell someone they've got clemency, if that's the right fucking word, or they, you can't tell someone you've got a deal, but come in and make this statement and then say, oh, we're, we're, the deal is out the window, but we're going to use what you said against you. So from a legal standpoint, and a friend of mine has pointed that out to me, uh, I don't know if you'd want me to say his name. Maybe he'll come on for a podcast about it. But, you know, it kind of is, yes, Cosby did the wrong things several times. He did illegal, horrible things. But at the same time, uh, our justice system, as flawed as it is, is there to protect the rights of everybody, not just the people we like. So one person, I think one of the victims of Cosby in this, in this doc, says... Um, on some little technical legal, you know, thing. But it's not a little technical fucking legal thing. That's the problem. It's, and Cosby, um, or his lawyers, if you want to give them credit, um, they took advantage to get him out of jail. Now, the question I would say is, <clears throat> if everybody knew that this was uh, a bad deal in the first place, why did Cosby ever go to jail in the first place? I don't have the answers for that. And I guess the only thing that these women that were abused, if they take some happiness or solace in the fact that Cosby was in jail for what, two years, year and a half, two years, something like that. So he did get punished in a sense. I don't know if Cosby's now suing <clears throat> for, for the time in jail that he spent or whatever the fuck, but the court of public opinion has come down on him 
there was, I think it was Judge Joe Brown did some interview with some guy where Judge Joe Brown, I think, I, I think that was him, was like, uh, there was no crime. No crime was committed. Well, it's like, okay. But the reality is, in reality, there can be a crime committed, but it's kind of like the tree falls in the fucking forest, even if nobody's there to hear it or put it on the goddamn smartphone. So the crimes could have happened and Cosby, two things can be the same at once. Crosby, Cosby could have committed these horrible crimes, but also been wrongfully prosecuted uh, after making that deal. So two things can be the same at once and none of it's particularly good, okay? But the shining light of all this stuff, if it is one, uh, and you know, they're very honest. I mean, they say in this doc towards the end, Cosby getting out, is that going to make women have, uh, or men, I suppose, but in this case, women, have second thoughts about going to the authorities with their stories of sexual abuse or impropriety? Because once you've seen a guy like Cosby, who, you know, pretty much is clearly guilty, even by his own words, but you see him get out of uh, jail there, is that going to make women less likely to report things? Would that make criminals, uh, sexual predators, more likely to do these horrible things? And so nobody has the goddamn answer. Um, what else? The actual quality of the doc, I think it's high. I mean, uh, you know, this is not an out there opinion. I mean, this thing played at Sundance, it it's won some awards. Uh, it has a very high IMDb meter for whatever that's worth. So it's not like I'm telling you something that nobody else would tell you, but I think the doc is very well made. The series, I should say, the four one hour episodes, I was able to crank them out in maybe a day and a half or two days, which is good for me. It's I'm not this, you know, guy who can just sit there and watch television for hours on end. Um, and if I am, I get a little channel hoppy. I go, you know, I want a trigger finger. Uh, but this thing does hold your attention. Some things about Cosby's career I didn't know. Um, this thing that he did on the Captain Kangaroo show, I believe, I really didn't know about that. I do remember Fat Albert. I mean, I can tell you that from everything I understand, when the Cosby show w was launched, I think back in 80, was it 84, 85, it was like a coronation of a fucking king. It's like everybody knew this show was coming. And then it came and everybody loved it. And it was number one with a fucking bullet. There was no, I mean, if you look at Seinfeld's trajectory, I think Seinfeld was on the air for four years. It was on its fourth season before it caught, you know, some momentum. It was struggling. The Seinfeld Chronicles, episodes one through four. Seinfeld was struggling. Other shows have to fight for their audience. Sometimes they get canceled and the audience, you know, social mediaism backs into existence, but not with the Cosby show. They did a great marketing job and people were hungry for it. And back in that time, it was Cosby, Family Ties, Cheers, and Night Court. That was your original must-see TV. Well, well, well before, uh, you know, Friends, Caroline in the City, uh, Seinfeld, whatever the fuck that lineup was. I guess it was Friends, Seinfeld, Caroline in the City, Frasier. You know, whatever the fuck the, the must-see TV became in the 90s, the 80s for NBC is what put that ass on the map and also set the template for some of these other things like uh, the Friday night shows with Full House and shit like that. So, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, Cosby's influence goes beyond NBC. It goes beyond uh, anything platform, you know, because he did so much. He did feature films, some of them, I don't think they got into this, but he did get a bunch of Razzies for something called Leonard Part 6. It was universally dogged as a bad movie. Um, but he did do some good movies and uh, stand-up comedy, of course. And I've actually seen Bill Cosby live. I think it was, I want to say 2010, 2011. He was part of this, you know, kind of motivational tour. I'm sure he got a nice payday. And they had all these other speakers in the Providence Civic Center for a whole day. And Cosby was really the main event, although he went second to last. The last performer, the last speaker, was actually Terry Bradshaw, who's had his own fucking issues lately. He's getting a little long in the tooth or soft in the noggin. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Should you watch this show? I, I think you should. 
you know, I hate to do this whole goddamn thing of, oh, if you have sensitivities, I think if you have sensitivities, you really should watch it because you're going to have to learn that this world is full of shit and you can't just avoid topics that, uh, you know, make you mad or sad or scared. You have to deal with these things from the comfort of your own home. So I'd say, even if you have some trepidation or it's a scary topic for you, I encourage a friend of mine, you know, he was a big Cosby guy and he's, he's having a hard time with this whole thing. And I said, man, you should watch this show. It'll help you process. Uh, and I think it will. So, I mean, what the fuck can I say? There's no graphic reenactments as far as I remember of rape or sexual assault. I mean, they talk about it. But I think that's the whole point of this goddamn series. Let's we need to talk about Cosby. So I give it a big thumb in the ass up. I give it a big big yes. Go watch it. Go click it. Whatever the fuck. I think I had a Paramount trial, so I got it with that. All these streaming things with the fucking trials. I mean, trial this, trial that. Jesus. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Subscribe to all this. One Mike Messier, you're here now. Of course, if you want to watch my films, uh, my my women power films, The Nature of the Flame, The Impeccable, all my wonderful short films with strong female characters, you go over to One uh, Man in a Camera Films. If you happen to be a pro wrestling and or sports fan, One Pro Wrestling and Sports Fan on YouTube, and this channel is One Mike Messier, where you get my movie rants, my life rants, all my thoughts. That's it. So see it. See it. We need to talk about Cosby.